I mean, did you ever feel like there was an intimidation factor? Uh, do you use that for your advantage now? Now we do, 100%. 100% dude yeah and the kind of coaches kind of had to relay that information to me because I mean at the end of the day I felt like a freshman on the mound I felt like a young kid like in front of Texas A&M in front of Florida like there's still gonna be that factor like ooh, I'm nervous as hell right now so how do you get over that is it was it just the coaches saying that was it like a mental game practice what did what did you have to do it's trying out different mentalities showing up to the park and then for me it's very picking one that fits you and then doing what you can with it. Like, at the end of the day, you're gonna be yourself. You're gonna have those mechanics. You're gonna have those bad days, those bad pitches. What is your mentality? Why is it not consistent every day you show up? What music are you listening to? What you do the day before? Is your routine? Is your week preparation? Like, what can that help you in some way? Um, Cause the mental game, I think involves your personality. It involves what you can bring to the table. It involves those guys in the dugout. They're looking at you on the mound and saying, oh, he's in a jam right now. What's he gonna do? Should we fold? Should I look to the bullpen? Are the coaches freaking out? It's stuff like that. So you got to look to the guys around you. You got to keep them and you're like, make sure they have trust in you in a way. So you're like, the, you feel like the leader out there. Uh, I think that's, I think that's the best way to feel it. I think everyone should be a leader on the field for sure. Rebel, you're not really that, that emotional on the mound either though, right? Um, I, biggest thing about emotion, I was like, I use my emotion when I feel like I've earned it. When I'm in that point in the game, five or six inning, and I've, I've done what I needed to, to kind of get it all out and keep it going, use that adrenaline. So let's go, speaking of no nerves, uh, probably the best game I've ever seen pitched, maybe at any level, was your game against Duke. What kind of zone were you in? Um, you know, you won, and I don't know if you saw it when you won it, but you were my most dominant performance of the year that year as a freshman striking out 19 guys against Duke in a no hitter in a super regional elimination game. Like what the heck is that? You're not supposed to be able to do that as a freshman. No, you're not. You're not supposed to do that. Um, the biggest thing was, it was really just the fear of the season ending and just those older guys, like kind of looking down and you like, dang, like you had a chance to do it, but you, you kind of failed it for us. And like, yeah, I put that on myself, but uh, the biggest part of it was just to get to the next one. Honestly, I tell that to everybody, but that game was, I was locked in. It was, it was different. Yeah. I mean, like, did you know that you were as locked in as you were at the time? Or was it like, did it creep up on you? I'd say after I hit that first guy, when I threw inside him in the head, after that, it was time. It was just time to like put a bandage over it and like, let's get going. Like, where the K's at, where the outs at, get to the next inning. So that's interesting because I noticed that too, obviously. You hit the first guy in the head. You're yeah. Kumar Rocker throwing gas. Do you think that played into their mentality a little bit? Were they, uh, you know, was that, an, obviously you don't do that on purpose. Right, That's, right. Right. Um, but could you tell that there was a different approach at the plate from them? I think so. For Like, I think the, the inside of like lefty to righty definitely opened up a lot more. And when I look back at the game, you hear people talking about the game starts with the command, it starts with the command. I think the biggest thing I took away from that was that the command of the fastball was on that game. So it allowed that slider to be opened up and what I could do with it was endless really with that command. Do you think about it in terms of tunneling? Like I, I did a breakdown of your pitching and I saw how like everybody's like, why are they swinging at a slider? Why don't they just lay off the slider out of the zone? I'm like, yeah, you try to do that. Like it's impossible, but were you thinking yeah. about it at the time? No, not at all. Really, really when it started, I knew it was tight. And then you asked about tunneling and stuff like that. And I'd say more like at this point this year, getting to rap Soto and seeing those different pitches, like how they work off each other and understanding my kind of spread is a little bit tighter than normal rather than a lefty's big 12, six and stuff like that. As you get into that, like I definitely understood why it was working, what the numbers looked like, what needed to happen. If I was going to do that again, if that ball is supposed to be swung at and not really seen every time. Yeah, because I definitely noticed that, uh, number one, your mechanics are the same, whether you're throwing a slider or a fastball. Um, but it looks like a fastball coming out of your hand, and then the ball just absolutely disappears, which as a hitter, when you saw one of your players get hit, you're wondering, like, you know, that's in your mind. You're, you're looking fastball and looking what to do, and, and you see this, and you can't react to a slider. Right, exactly, especially with uh, the spin it has on it, the effect it has on it, yeah. Now, in that game, were you really 97 in the ninth inning? Right. Um, I, I think I definitely was. <laughs> I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that on myself. I think I definitely was. I think I had the juice and I had the adrenaline to get through those last couple innings for sure. 
Now, what did it mean to you? Like you had players, I mean, Patrick Mahomes retweeted you and said, that man's slider is, is nasty. Like, what does that mean to you as a freshman having Patrick Mahomes do that? Oh, I mean, it was a huge honor. I mean, I know Patty Mahomes is like, I mean, as like his career has gone and definitely his like his dad, what he's done. And then looking at more so the Vanderbilt alum guys, just like those tweets are really real and they're really sincere. And it was kind of like gave me a place, gave me kind of like a home feeling. So going back to this, to the Duke game, the one thing that stood out for me, and, and I'd mentioned like there were very few games that I get up and I start yelling at the TV um, just because you, you really took the game to the next level. But it was during that the offensive conference uh, when, when Duke called a, a timeout just to get in your head. Uh, mm-hmm. And you were fi- like you were chill the whole game, it looked like. And then you got fired up. Like, what was that like? Uh, yeah, I think I think he just conferenced for a little bit too long when it became like cut that in half. It's respectful. Like, I'll give him a little game plan. But then it, it went a little bit too far. And then it was uh, it was kind of disrespectful. So I felt that way. Like I said, emotions earned. I was in the position. I had to let him know. Brandon, it's a coach's job. Like his job is to get you off your game, but right. there's that little payback that you got. Like yeah, I said, uh, when it came, like I said earlier, it's like that chirping in the stands, like, hey, that might affect your team that's playing against me right now. So just keep that, keep that on your mouth a little bit. And did that help carry you through the rest of the game? Oh yeah, definitely kept me going in that like that down period in the dugout for sure. Yeah. Uh, did did Corbin or Brown say anything to you after that? Like, mm-hmm. uh, they didn't talk to me that whole game. They only ride. It was sick. It was dope. Yeah, I, I got to say that they were probably thinking, like, I kept thinking, are they going to let him keep pitching? or like? But I also thought, am I going to pull him? Because, like, he is pitching the best, like, freaking 19Ks, <laughs> dude. Yeah. No, they let, it, they let it rock. They didn't say anything to me. They just let me go out there like normal. It was can, awesome. you, can you top that? Can I top that? <laughs> like, I think that's – some point like it's gonna happen when I least expect it I think I could definitely top that and do you feel like years of preparing mental game wise helped you or was that just in the moment like you just rose to it um did you pull anything from the past to to have you uh perform like that uh, I think this goes I think this goes deep and definitely like I say you really shine light on like those young days and uh, I just remember being on deck in different games with like the slammers the ravens that southern travel ball circuit like, at the end of the day, like, you got to remember all those times. It was two outs, and y'all was playing the game to get to the championship, and you're up the bat. There's days where I struck out. There's days I had to hit for the team, and it really comes down to just, like, hey, man, you might be in that position. You might be in that position. And then that day on that stage for that team, I happened to be in that position, and you can't really look back. You got to do what you can with it. So do you visualize the good thing? Like, are you visualizing – this uh like all the successes that you had in those situations to say i can do this type of thing in that moment no but i'd say what i took away from it that like i say i bring a mentality to the field and you got to see if it works because there's different ones for each day maybe during that day during that time was staying with the team and staying with the team really helped me just kind of like have faith in myself because if i failed they had me you know what i'm saying absolutely um was it a, was was there any bigger award than winning a pitching ninja most dominant pitcher? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was the biggest honor. That was definitely the biggest honor. Awesome. Like said, yeah, like you're doing like I, I told you earlier, like you're doing a great job. And like I don't know, like I don't necessarily when you when necessarily when you caught fire, but I've watched it progress to like the gear, to the people retweeting you, stuff like that. I think that I think that's a game changer. I, I think you were the first to ever do it. So yeah. I'm kind of the OG, the Twitter OG. You are. You are the OG. You are the OG.